I performed a public service. You act like that's a bad thing. It is a bad thing, Bob. Uprooting our family again so you can relive the glory days is a very bad thing. Reliving the glory days is better than acting like they didn't happen. Yes, they happened. But this, our family, is what's happening now, Bob. <laughs> So over the summer, I made the video Psychology of the Incredibles. I basically rambled for like 12 minutes straight and I intentionally left out this little scene that's entitled Life's Incredible Again. To summarize the scene, this is where Bob is doing hero work behind his family's back. And to be honest, I love this scene, but I also hate this scene. Now here's why I love this scene. This is a perfect example of mental, emotional, and physical fitness to some extent. Bob has been going through a somewhat of a depression. It's been 15 years since superheroes have been banned. He kind of has the dad bod going on and emotionally he just seems like dead inside. It's not until he gets the opportunity to be a hero again that his mindset starts to change. He's doing something that he loves. That improves his mental fitness. His emotional fitness gets better because he has more time to spend with his family. And of course, the physical fitness is on point because he's hitting the gym. However, this is kind of a catch 22 because this scene is a mirage. It is a hallucination. The way Bob perceived life is quite literally a hallucination. It's psychotic. They keep creating new ways to celebrate mediocrity, but if someone is genuinely exceptional, This is then not they... about you, Bob. This is about Dash. You want to do something for Dash? Then let him actually compete. You know why we can't do that. Because it'd be great! This is not about you! Supers aren't gone, Mr. Incredible. You're still here. You can still do great things. And that is my biggest problem with this one minute and 20 second. Yes, it's a minute and 20 seconds. That's my biggest problem with this life's incredible scene. This scene is all about Bob. You may think it's him reconnecting with his family and you know, getting his mental, emotional and physical fitness together. And that's true to some extent, but in reality, he does not realize that he's being lured by syndrome and mirage to his demise. He doesn't realize that by lying to his family, He's damaging his relationship with his wife and his kids. And the truth eventually catches up to him. You mean dad's in trouble or dad is the trouble? I mean, either he's in trouble or he's going to be. And the real like frustrating tragic part about this scene is that Bob technically already did his assignment as Mr. Incredible once. He could have stopped. He had the new paycheck. He had the new whip. He had all this stuff. He could have stopped because he was already doing great things. He was already spending time with his family. He was already enjoying life. But Bob only thought life was incredible again because he was Mr. Incredible again. Now, why did I mention this and why did I mention this scene? Like, what does it have to do with us? We can be our worst enemies at times. We can be just like Bob. We can have this fear of being mediocre. We may have this perceived idea of how we think we should act and how we think we should be and what our life should be like. And where do you think the saying in a perfect world comes from? Because what we would like to happen rarely happens, let's be honest. Even as I speak right now, I'm literally my biggest enemy. I'm my biggest hater. I always say, Colin, you should have did this better. When people tell me I do a great job, secretly I'm like, no, I didn't do a great job. But that thinking is flawed, it's negative. I'm not looking at myself the way other people see me. And that's why we have others to help readjust our thinking. And eventually his family adjusts his thinking and he learns the hard way that he was already doing great things. He didn't have to be Mr. Incredible again. And this is where I think family and friends that aren't toxic can come in. They can help adjust your thinking and they can say, Colin, right now you're living in this mirage, but you're not stopping. You're not stopping and spelling the coffee. You're having this flawed thinking. Don't be your worst enemy. Have a healthy, balanced view of yourself. I feel like if Helen and Bob just talked out this mysterious message that they got from Mirage, the conflict would be over and Bob wouldn't feel as mediocre and he'd be honest with his family and tell them the truth and everything would be nice and dandy. I mean, the only bad part is the movie would be over because there would be no like syndrome, no Omnijoy, no Dash running on water, no Violet hamster wheel, no Frozone, no, no where's my super suit. My main problem is this scene was needed to further the plot and it makes sense because you want to have some tension between Mr. and Mrs. Incredible but I get that but you know I'm just saying you know they had talked it out it would have been good but anyways let this scene be a warning you don't have to live in a mirage you can always have an honest heart to heart with your friends and family of course non-toxic and get some positive feedback and just readjust your thinking 
that's what I learned from this scene, and that's why I love slash hate this scene. But with that being said, that's pretty much it. I feel like I've talked long enough. If you enjoyed the video, you can give it a heart. If you want to talk more down below on how you interpreted this scene, I'd love to talk to you more about it. If you really enjoyed the video, you can share it. And if you're feeling froggy, you can do all three. But with that being said, that is it. As always, guys, remember to stay mentally fit, emotionally fit, and physically fit. And I will see you all in the next video.